Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, thank you so much for clicking into this video. I would love for you to hit that red subscribe button and join our tribe here on YouTube. My name is Chelsea, and I create videos for infertility support, as well as documenting my life and just whatever I have going on at that time. And um, as of right now, I am 22 weeks pregnant. Um, but it wasn't easy to get here. My husband and I took us four years to um, conceive and we ended up going through all the fertility treatments and testing and ended up doing IVF. So in today's video, I want to share with you not necessarily our story because my husband and I did um, record a video talking all about our infertility story. And so I will link that below if you're curious as to our exact like timeline and story and how everything worked out for us. Um, but if you are interested in learning more about what to expect, if you are currently struggling to conceive, you're in that TTC um, part of your life and it's just not working for you yet, um, then here are some tips, here are some things I'm going to share with you and some, I guess, just advice. I don't know. I'm just going to kind of give you an idea of what um, will happen when you start using medical intervention in your trying to conceive journey. So anyway, if you are interested in that, go ahead and keep watching. the beginning of the year or the end of the year around Christmas time the holidays that's a really popular time for people to start thinking about you know where am I gonna be a year from now and if you're trying to conceive you're hoping that you're pregnant by next Christmas or having a baby before then and so I think this is a good time for us to just talk about um, how you're gonna get there because some people, it's just, I think the number is one in eight. Um, one in eight couples struggles with infertility. And if you have been trying for a year and you are under the age of 35 and you have not been able to get pregnant, then you are considered infertile. Not gonna lie, it kind of sucks to be part of this club, but <laughs> I am happy there's a lot of support out there on YouTube, on Instagram, and um, we can help support each other and Get each other to where we want to be which is with our take-home baby so like i said if you've been trying for a year and you have not conceived naturally on your own yet then it's definitely time to see your gynecologist or your OBGYN, um or even just your primary care physician um so at, for us after six months of not being able to conceive that worried me um because i read online that um, it takes the average couple three months to get pregnant. So I was a little concerned. I felt like, you know, there's got to be something wrong. So I did make an appointment with my gynecologist and let her know that we were trying to conceive. And she did tell me that um, we should give it another six months, wait till it had been a year, and then come back. So sure enough, after six months more, we still hadn't conceived. So we ended up going back to our gynecologist and getting the testing done. So after a year, you should definitely start getting tested. Um, you, If you feel like you need it done earlier than that, you can. You can ask your doctor to get the testing done sooner. They can at least start with a sperm analysis because that's not invasive. I think it's even covered by most insurance companies um, just to check the health of the sperm, the motility, mobility, morphology. Um, just get that out of the way. <laughs> so um, that would be the first test that you would start with. And then uh, generally they want to test your hormones, both you and your husband, your partner. Um, so that would be probably the next step is blood work, blood tests, um, lots of blood work and blood tests, checking all sorts of different things. Um, and hormone levels especially, and if there's any, I think you should even get those 
hormones checked multiple times uh, just to be really thorough Um, because sometimes during your cycle your hormone levels can change Um, yeah and you could even just start with by going to an endocrinologist then getting your having them specifically check your hormones because I feel like in my experience at least when I was at my gynecologist's office and they were doing the testing I feel like it was just kind of like routine like whatever they didn't really spend a lot of time they just sort of did the basic testing um, of me and my husband and then that's when when things started to look fine there weren't any concerns with blood work and stuff like that um, then they did an HSG on me which is a I honestly can't remember the full name of it, so I will go ahead and put it right here. And that is what it's called, but we in the fertility world, we just call it an HSG. And basically this is the dye test where they shoot dye up into your uterus and through your fallopian tubes just to make sure they're not blocked. And um, if they're not blocked, then that's great. And in many cases, a lot of people, not many cases, I can't really say that. In some cases, people will get pregnant after doing the HSG test because especially if one of their tubes is blocked or something um, because things are just more fluid and open after that time. So after you do an HSG test, get busy and (laughs) see if that will help you conceive. So sometimes even before testing starts or as it's going, um, your doctor might prescribe Clomid which is a fertility drug. Um, It's kind of like the go-to. It's pretty cheap and expensive. It's a quick way to um, get things going. Um, Basically what Clomid does is you take it for about five days during the month and it's going to help you produce eggs and ovulate. It's kind of like speeding up that process, I guess. And so for some people who that's their problem, that can work really well. But if you know you're ovulating every month like I was, then may or may not work for you. Um, So they'll put you on Clomid, but usually you're only supposed to be on Clomid for three to six months max, I think. Um, If it doesn't work within a three month period of time, I would say, in my opinion, I don't, and from what I've researched, obviously, I'm not a doctor. Let me say that right now, I'm not a doctor. You should do what your doctor says. But my experience, and with talking to my doctor, I was just like, if you're, if we aren't getting pregnant within three months, I don't see the point. Especially if I know I'm ovulating, because Clomid, one of the main things it does is it makes you ovulate. So I just don't want to spend more time on that drug. If that makes sense, even though it is very in, non-invasive and inexpensive. So another drug that they might give you is Femara, I think, or Letrozole is another word for it. I think is like the generic name but um that's very similar to clomid um but some people have better results with femera or letrozole than clomid so that's another medication you could bring up to your doctor if um they haven't already mentioned it to you um but for sure make sure you're just going through all the testing thoroughly like i mentioned the blood work hormone checks Um, sperm analysis, HSG tests. One thing that we didn't have done that I wish we would have done in the very beginning is an ultrasound. And maybe some doctors don't think it's necessary, but I wasn't, I didn't do an ultrasound until I went to a fertility clinic. So you may have to go to a fertility clinic and do an ultrasound there before, but some gynecologist offices will do IUIs, which is the next, um, step after Clomid or fertility drugs. An IUI is just an intrauterine insemination or like artificial insemination basically where they put the sperm exactly where it should go at the exact time to meet the egg and um, fertilize. So it's just skipping that traveling step. Um, IUIs only have about a 20% chance for most people and if you have other factors for like that are causing your infertility. I like to do this because it's like, it's it, it shouldn't be like you are infertile. It's like you are struggling with infertility at this time. But most people I feel like, especially for us, we're undiagnosed infertility. I don't consider myself infertile because, yeah, anyway, I'm getting off track here. But so, um, 
after you do the, the drugs, they'll probably want to move you on to IUI. And at my gynecologist's office, they could do IUIs there. But I just felt like it was time after that was another year of doing testing and stuff and fertility drugs um, at the gynecologist that I, so it's been two years for us, that I was ready to just move on and start um, at a fertility clinic. So on our first appointment at our fertility clinic, they did do an ultrasound to just kind of look at everything going on in me because Eric had been tested at that point several times. Um, His sperm was always coming back great. So it was something going on with me, they assumed. So they did an ultrasound and everything looked pretty good, he said. My uterus was slightly shifted and they could tell that from the um, HSG test, that dye test, um, and in the ultrasound. But he was saying that shouldn't really um, be a cause for why we weren't getting pregnant. So after we did our um, ultrasound, our fertility doctor decided let's give IUI a shot, even though it's only 20% chance. Let's, you seem to be like a good candidate for it, so let's give it a shot. Um, so in order for IUI to work, you have to be, a, your ovaries have to be working properly um, because really like the only step that it skips is just the traveling of the sperm. So, you know, your tubes have to be healthy and so, you know, if you have any issues with your tubes, then, you know, it's, it, it might not work. Probably won't work. So, a part of infertility testing is the actual procedures, too. So, when you do an IUI, you can learn more about what might be going on. And when you do IVF, same thing, you can learn a lot more about what might be causing your infertility. So my doctor said that most of the time when people have undiagnosed fertility, infertility, that means they have endometriosis. He said most times it ends up being endometriosis, which endometriosis can show up around a woman's like entire reproductive system basically. So it can, um, and it like manifests as like scar tissue and there's different stages of it. And really the only way that they can um, diagnose endometriosis is if they go in with a scope through your belly button, do a laparoscopic surgery um, to check out what's going on in there. But some symptoms of endometriosis are really painful periods and um, some like abdomen pain. I think there's some other symptoms, but it's very hard to diagnose endometriosis um, without like going in surgically. So a lot of doctors don't necessarily want to do that because you can get pregnant with endometriosis, especially with IVF. However, if you have a lot of pain, um, like menstrual cramps, like really bad menstrual cramps, um, then I would suggest talking to your doctor about endometriosis, letting them know your symptoms and so that they can better diagnose you. And there are some other things that can be done when you have endometriosis when you're going through the fertility um, treatments. So it's good to have your doctor be aware that you think you may or may not have endometriosis. One thing I found about infertility is you really have to be an advocate for yourself because it's so easy, I think, for doctors to just go through the routine of diagnosing and prescribing and doing procedures on people where everyone is so different and fertility is so like the reproductive system is so complicated and there's so many different factors that can play into why you're not getting pregnant and so I think it's really good to do a lot of research and be an advocate for yourself and question you know what your doctor's doing with respect of course because of course, these doctors have tons of experience and they're very talented with, you know, the surgeries they can do and the types of things they can um, help you with. But you should bring up things like, you know, if you're if you don't think an IUI is going to work for you, then tell your doctor that um, you don't have to do j- just what they say. You should kind of question things, like I said, with respect. So generally, after 
two to three IUIs, um, you should be pregnant. And if you're not, then IUIs are probably not going to work for you. However, some insurance companies will pay for IUIs and they'll pay for up to a certain amount, like five or six. If your insurance company will pay for up to five or six or whatever, I would just do as many IUIs as your insurance company will pay for. Um, if you're paying out of pocket though, that's when you kind of want to decide, you know, is IUI going to work for us or should we just go right to IVF? Because the stats for IVF, like being successful, are so much better than IUI. So I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of IVF. Um, that's kind of the big guns of fertility treatments. Um, and I'm pretty sure it has a 49% chance of working. Like that's the success rate it, it's at right now. Maybe it's higher. I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to go into that too much because I have so many videos on IVF on my channel and I have like a whole playlist of me going through IVF all last year, you know, the day to day like process, I guess, of IVF. But then I also have recap videos like how much we spent um and all that kind of stuff basically all i wanted to do in this video is just give you an idea as to what will happen when you start getting medical intervention in your trying to conceive journey so um i know i didn't touch on everything but i wanted to give you an overview of kind of how things will play out if you guys have any questions please reach out to me i can share more of my experience and things I've researched and heard from other people. If you yourself have been through the fertility testing and want to add anything that I may have missed, please comment below and help your TTC sisters here um, and brothers if there's any partners, um, male partners here in the group. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today, you guys. Um, I really hope that 2019 is a great year for everyone and that you all find success in your TTC journey and we can all come out on the other end with our take home babies. I just, I love hearing success stories. So please share any success stories you have, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, whether it's through fertility treatments or maybe it happened when you weren't even doing fertility treatments, just share your success stories. Let's, um, build and strengthen strengthen this community down below in the comments that's pretty much it you guys thank you so much for watching this video and i will catch you in my next one bye